The Pirate Bay is likely one of the most infamous websites in the world. Ever since it launched in 2003, the Pirate Bay has been one of the top places to pirate movies, software, and games. As you would guess, this has enraged copyright holders and prosecutors who have been trying to shut down the site and punish pirates. But despite how many times they take it down, it seems like it's always just a matter of time until the site is back up and running. Considering this, you would think that the key to solving the issue is addressing the root problem by taking down the founders. But prosecutors have tried this as well. They chased the founders across the world, threw them in jail, and charged them with every copyright infringement charge you can think of. Yet, the Pirate Bay still lives on. In fact, one of the founders is actually happy to do jail time in order to keep the Pirate Bay alive. So, here's how the Pirate Bay came to life, what happened to the founders, and why prosecutors have struggled to take it down. Taking a look back, the origins of the Pirate Bay date back to a Swedish organization called Piratbyrån, which means the Piracy Bureau. As the name suggests, the organization focused on legalizing piracy through political connections, petitioning, and lobbying. Most people at the organization felt that information should be allowed to freely spread across the internet, and they questioned the idea of intellectual property. In fact, some of these guys would even argue that piracy is helpful to companies because it gets expensive software and games into the hands of people who would have otherwise never tried it. And once they get addicted to the said game or software, they're much more likely to actually buy it the second or third time around. Now, I would never argue that piracy is moral, but there's no doubt that software like Windows, Adobe's Creative Cloud, and even Grand Theft Auto wouldn't be nearly as popular as they are today without piracy. This line of reasoning was basically the framework of Pirate Biron, and in September of 2003, they would decide to take it to the next level. Three Pirate Biron employees named Peter Sund, Gottfried Swartham, and Frederick Nage launched a file sharing website called the Pirate Bay. The idea was inspired by BitTorrent, which made its debut a few years before this. Originally, the Pirate Bay was run out of servers in Mexico. Gottfried convinced his employer who had service in Mexico to help them run the site, but it didn't take long for his employer to back off. So, the founders were forced to bring the site back home, and Gottfried ran it using his Pentium 3 laptop, which only had 256 megabytes of RAM. Despite the basic setup, given the limited number of file sharing sites back in 2003, it didn't take long for pirates to flood in. By the end of 2004, the pirate bay saw a total of 1 million users and 60,000 files being shared. As the site grew, the trio expanded their operations by getting servers and databases, and they transformed their laptop service into an international hub for file sharing. And by 2006, everything under the sun was being shared on the site, whether that be music and movies, or software and games. And to make things worse, the Pirate Bay wasn't even trying to distance themselves from these activities. Some other popular piracy sites like Mega.NZ try to put up a good guy persona in order to minimize trouble with the law. But this wasn't the case with the Pirate Bay. These guys were proud to enable free information sharing across the internet, and they had no intention of hiding behind some fake persona. And this attitude became extremely apparent to authorities after they sent out dozens of copyright infringement and cease and desist notices which resulted in no action from the founders. The police tried to just ignore the site for many years, but as the site continued to grow in popularity, they started to receive more and more pressure to take it down. And in 2006, they finally decided to crack down. I'm sure the founders always expected trouble with the authorities given the nature of what they were doing, but I'm not sure if they expected the force at which prosecutors would hit back. On May 31st, 2006, 65 police officers raided the Pirate Base data center and shut down their servers. None of the founders were arrested, but it was made pretty clear that the site should not be restarted. As you would guess though, the founders ignored these demands. They went ahead and got new servers in an unspecified location in the Netherlands, and the Pirate Bay was back up and running within just three days. Not only did the raid not take down the website, but it actually led to more people using the website. You see, the police raid became international news, and even the New York Times ran a story about it. Aside from driving more users to the website, these news articles fueled an international movement amongst internet nerds. One hacker went ahead and hacked into Sweden's national police website, policen.se, and took down the website. And just as the police website was restored, the government website was taken down. Clearly, these were extremely irresponsible moves, but they definitely made a statement. Shortly after the raid, the Pirate Bay grew to be the 465th most visited website in the world, and some lawyers even jumped onto the founder's side. The lawyers accused the police of unfairly impounding every server in sight during the raid. 
You see, the servers that were impounded weren't only responsible for running the Pirate Bay, but also responsible for running dozens of small websites and businesses. So, the police had wronged all these businesses in the name of taking down one website. The lawyers also argued that the Swedish police didn't have a justifiable reason to conduct the raid in the first place. They accused the Swedish government of giving in to American political pressure instead of carrying out law and order. The government, of course, strongly denied these charges and these cases didn't really go anywhere. But the government had a nightmare dealing with all this unexpected negative PR. Initially, they expected that they would be hailed as the heroes fighting against piracy, but instead, they were made out to be the villains. The thing is, most people have pirated media or software at some point during their lives. Statistically, 52% of online users have watched pirated videos, even though 59% of users are aware that downloading and streaming pirated videos is illegal. And that's just the people who admitted to it. As a result, when the news came out that the Pirate Bay had been taken down, it was not like the average person was jumping up and down in excitement. The more realistic reaction was probably, oh well, it was nice while it lasted. Considering this, only a very small portion of people went out of their way to support the Swedish government's actions. And without large public support, the government couldn't just raid the Pirate Bay again because that would just increase its popularity even more. So they decided to address the root by taking down the founders. On April 17, 2009, the three founders, Peter, Frederick, and Gottfried, as well as the server provider, Carl Lundstrom, were found guilty of assistance to copyright infringement and were each sentenced to one year in prison. They were also ordered to pay a fine worth 30 million Swedish kroner or 4.3 million dollars. The squad appealed the verdict, arguing that Sweden gave in to political pressure. This actually decreased each of their sentences by a few months, but it increased the fine to 46 million kroner or 6.6 .6 million dollars. This didn't really matter to the founders though, as they had no intention of paying the fine. Peter actually held up a sign during the press conference that followed the verdict that said, I owe you 31 million kroner. He followed up this statement by suggesting that this was all the government was going to get. He claimed that he didn't have any money, and even if he did, he'd rather burn everything and not even give them the ashes. In terms of the arrest though, Carl and Peter didn't really resist much further and they simply gave in. But the same could not be said about Gottfried and Frederick who went on the run. Gottfried ran away to Cambodia, which had a no extradition policy to Sweden. But despite the policy, the Cambodian police arrested Gottfried on August 30, 2012 and deported him back to Sweden. There's been some speculation that Sweden and Cambodia had an insider deal to extradite Gottfried. Just six days after Gottfried was arrested, the Swedish government announced a 400 million kroner grant for Cambodia. So it is awfully suspicious, but all we can do is speculate. Once Gottfried was back in Sweden, he served his jail sentence at the Mary Fred prison. But the police didn't just stop right there. They also piled on hacking and fraud charges which led to a total 3-year sentence. But eventually, in September of 2015, Gottfried was released. And finally, as for Frederick, he was able to evade the police for even longer than Gottfried. He had fled to Laos slash Thailand and he had built a life in both of these countries. Honestly, I don't know why he didn't just choose one or the other as this dual life resulted in him crossing the border on a regular basis. And during one of these border crossings in November of 2014, he was arrested and deported. Fortunately for Frederick, his prison sentence was far less severe than Gottfried's coming in at 10 months. Frederick actually claims that prison wasn't even that bad and that it was well worth it for the Pirate Bay. Apparently, he was the only one in the prison that was there for a virtual crime, so the guards weren't as tough on him. He says that he was able to smuggle in USB sticks with movies on them and watch them on his prison TV. He did miss his friends and family, but he received dozens of letters from fans of the Pirate Bay, which he says helped him get through the 10 months. Anyway, now that all the founders were behind bars, the police could finally shut down the Pirate Bay once and for all, or so they thought. On December 9th, 2014, the Swedish police raided the Pirate Bay once again and impounded all of their servers, computers, and equipment. With the founders out of the game, this must be the end, right? Well, just four days after the Pirate Bay was taken down, a torrent site called Isohunt launched a website called oldpiratebay.org which mirrored all the content on the Pirate Bay. And this is when the prosecutors realized that they had lost the game forever. Here's the thing, the Pirate Bay doesn't actually host any files themselves. They just connect peers from around the world using links. So all the Pirate Bay is storing is links. The contents of the entire website can be stored within a gigabyte if not less, and there are thousands of people making copies of the website on a daily basis. So even if authorities take down one copy of the site, it's not very difficult to upload a gigabyte of data to a new server and get a new domain. And that's why it's impossible to truly take down the Pirate Bay. 
Considering this, prosecutors have basically given up on taking down the Pirate Bay as there's simply no single person to hold accountable. In the meantime, copyright holders have shifted their efforts to working with internet service providers to cut internet to pirates. But this has just left the pirates using VPNs. Anyway, as for the founders today, Peter went ahead and founded a Patreon type service called Flatter. Instead of donating to creators though, the service is used to donate to websites and projects that better society and reveal corruption like WikiLeaks. Aside from Flatter, Peter has also given several speeches and interviews regarding his various views on the world. Gottfried and Frederick, on the other hand, don't have nearly as big of a public image. In fact, they have no public presence at all, and they simply disappeared into the depths of the internet. After Frederick was released, he said that he was going to get an IT job and settle in Laos, so that's presumably what he's doing now. And that's what happened to the Pirate Bay's founder and why the Pirate Bay can never be taken down. Do you guys think piracy is moral? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you've ever downloaded something that you shouldn't have. And of course, consider checking out our international channels to watch our videos in other languages, and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.